Good morning, everybody. Good morning to those watching on YouTube or good afternoon or good evening, or whatever time you may be watching this video for class for SFA. Um, I look forward to seeing the students here today. And for those of you who did not make it today, uh, April 8th, 2021, I look forward to seeing you during the next class possibly. I see the students on their way in, so I will let them in now. Good morning, Demaje. How are you doing today? Good morning, Marque. How are you doing? It is nine oh four right now. Let's wait a little, another moment or so for more of your classmates to hop in before we get started for today, okay? You had a nice day yesterday? Okay. Good morning, Rosalind. Good morning, Niles. Hope you both are doing well today. Good morning. Let me make sure I get y'all down for attendance real quick. DJ, let's see, Mark Quay, Chris Linda. Is it so far? All right, it's 9.05. I think we can go ahead and get started. Uh, today is not gonna be a long day of class since you had your cycle test, yet, test yesterday. Um, I'm not gonna try to give you all like a whole bunch extra to do. Uh, so today we're gonna have a, a reading respond assignment. Uh, if you have not done your cycle test, be sure to do that. You know, I think the, the test is open until about like Sunday at midnight, I think. So be sure to get on that. But let me go ahead and share my screen. So we can look at what we have for today. Let's start off by looking at Canvas for the Reading Edge class. Uh, in the home section at the very top, you see our daily reminder, which tells us to always check our announcements and calendar. Uh, if we click the announcement section over here, nothing really new. Still the most recent thing is your unit four cycle two vocabulary. So next, if we take a look at the calendar for today, which is April 8th, 2021, you see we have the class start time at 9.05 a.m. We have the Zoom meeting information as well as the bell work for today. So let's take a look at today's bell work. Again, you see we have a reading response. So be sure to answer all six questions, okay? All six. They ask you, is this selection informal or literary? So think of the text. Is it more so just to kind of teach or give information? Or is that, you know, more so literary to like give a story? And to summarize your reading. Don't forget to summarize what happened. Question two, why did you choose this reading? What is your purpose for reading it? Uh, you could just say, Mr. Bush assigned it, and it was part of the assignment. Easy way to answer that. Uh, number three, choose a word, phrase, or passage that you did not understand at first. How did you figure it out? So in the reading, if there's something you didn't quite understand, uh, try to figure it out. Uh, use some of your, um, your graphic organizers and things of that nature. You could also simply just Google something or look it up on the dictionary, however you figure out what that word or phrase or whatever was. Look it up if you don't understand it. <laughs> and then let me know how you, you know, figure it out. Number four, write down a question that you had or prediction that you made as you read. So if you're reading something and you're thinking like, oh, uh, I bet this is about to happen or I bet 
uh, the reading's about to talk about this, or if it's a question you have about something, write it down and then try to answer it. If you uh, can't answer it, great. Let me know what your answer was, like what the meaning of that part was, or if you cannot figure it out, you know, let me know. Maybe I can, you know, get you some feedback to try to help you understand it. Uh, number five, would you recommend this selection to others to read? State your opinion and supportive reasons. So if you like the article we're gonna read, let me know and let me know why. If you don't like it and you don't recommend it for people, let me know uh, and let me know why not. Uh, number six, choose a short section of the text that you think is important or especially interesting, okay? So if it's something you think is really important with the text or you know something you really thought was cool or interesting, let me know. Uh, tell your teammates why you chose it. Uh, just tell me why you thought it was important or interesting. All right, so let's get to the reading for today. Uh, good morning, Joshua. I'm glad you made it. Uh, today's reading also comes from newzella.com. This article is titled National Youth Poet Laureate. That's laureate. That's an interesting word. Finalists found confidence and friendship through words. The National Youth Poet Laureate, uh, that's like a competition basically for um, poetry writers. Here's an image of some of the finalists right here. It says in the description, this is a finalist for the 2021 National Youth Poet Laureate. And they are from left, I guess, to right. We have uh, Faye Harrison here of Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, Alexandra Hune of Sacramento, California. Again, we're going from left to right. So that's her here. Serena Yang of New York. That's her. And Alora Young of Nashville, Tennessee, right here. Uh, the article is by Christina Barron. So that's the, the author of the article. She's with the Washington Post. So let's uh, see what the reading is talking about today. Uh, Niles, remember to turn your video camera on. If you do not have your video camera on at some point, I will count you absent. You can't have it off just the whole time. If you have to have it off for some reason, that's fine. But at some point during today's class, I need to be able to see you're here in order to give you your attendance, okay? Or we'll count you for attendance. All right. Millions of TV viewers were mesmerized by Amanda Gorman's reading of her poem, The Hill We Climb, at President Joe Biden's inauguration in January. If you have seen it, you may have thought, how can she share something she wrote in front of a huge crowd? The answer is that Gorman, who turned 23 years old on Sunday, has had a lot of practice. She began writing poetry as a kid. In high school, she got involved with the literary arts group, Urban Word, which hosts writing workshops and slam poetry competitions. Gorman became Los Angeles Youth Poet Laureate at age 16 in California, and three years later, the first National Youth Poet Laureate. But Gorman is just one of many young poets eager to share their work and inspire others. Faye Harrison, Alexandra Hune, Serena Yang, and Alora Young are the finalists in this year's National Youth Poet Laureate Program. There are also judges in the Kids Post Poetry Contest run by the Washington Post. We wanted to learn about how they became poets and what advice they have for kids. Hyun, Yang, and Young were able to meet recently on Zoom to share their thoughts. All three mentioned that writing became a way of expressing their feelings early in elementary school. 
but they didn't necessarily intend to write poetry. So uh, they started young off doing uh, writing as a form of expression, as I said here in elementary school, uh, but they didn't necessarily think they were gonna go into poetry. So that's a, a great thing with trying different things while you're younger, y'all. You know, you may like something, you may not, but if you do, you know, you might wanna pursue that you know, in the future or as you get older and get better and better at it. You might also be a, a, a laureate a candidate. But let's continue with the reading, all right? I realized that the first poetry I ever wrote was in the form of song. I start, excuse me, I think I started when I was in first or second grade. I loved Hannah Montana and I wanted to be like Hannah Montana. Ian says of Miley Cyrus's Disney Channel character. So that's one way they started off before they started off by, you know, trying to write songs and that kind of translated into uh, poetry for them. Both were California girls, but unlike brash Hannah, Hune was shy. She thought that adults expected her to struggle with English because she learned Vietnamese first. Excuse me. So the combination of being extremely introverted, that means like being a, a person that's, you know, very to yourself, either shy, you, you may not be that vocal in class or around people. Uh, introverted people tend to like stick to themselves a lot and like uh, do their own thing because that's uh, more comfortable for them. The opposite of introverted is extroverted. That's a more like talkative, you know, people person, somebody that likes to, you know, go out in crowds, talk to everybody while an introvert likes to kind of, you know, stick to like smaller groups of people, maybe close friends or maybe just themselves. And they're more shy. Uh, but that's just, you know, one word that you could learn with this passage. Uh, let me start that sentence over. So the comp combination of being extremely introverted but then also not being seen as someone who could dominate language motivated me to really use it as a way to express my truth and make a place for myself, says Hume, who is 18. Being able to perform songs or poems for people made me feel I had value. Yang, whose family moved from Singapore to New York, when she was in first grade, says she was embarrassed about her foreign accent. She spent a lot of time writing. Uh, one moment, y'all. I'm gonna stop sharing. I think uh, I think somebody's trying to get into the Zoom meeting. All right, y'all, apologize for that. Let me share my screen again so we can continue back. All right, uh, okay, I'll reread that. Yang, whose family moved from Singapore to New York when she was in first grade, says she was embarrassed about her foreign accent. She spent a lot of time writing. I remember in second grade, I didn't have any friends. I was a very lonely child and I became very close to my second grade teacher. She says, notice there's these uh, parentheses, uh, not parentheses, these quotation marks here. Remember whenever you see quotation marks, that means it's like a direct quote from somebody. So what's written down is basically somebody's exact words that they're saying, okay? Uh, here's some more quotations. She would write things in my writing book, excuse me, writing notebook, 
like Serena, you're going to be a great writer one day. Yang still has that notebook and the 19 year old recently realized that her earliest writings were poems. Yang remembers writing her first poem at age seven to express how she felt about her family moving. I moved to Nashville, Tennessee. Whenever you see like little uh, parentheses like that, that basically means like a little extra information to kind of clarify. So when she says she moved to Nashville, quotation Tennessee, that's basically for people who may not know where Nashville is. She's trying to give you that extra information. A lot of times in writing, you'll see like quotation marks with like a word or a phrase in it, just to kind of give you that extra information. So she may have not necessarily said this, even though it's in quotation marks, exactly with Tennessee in it. But whoever typed this up wanted to add this just to help you understand where, okay? So whenever you see quotation marks like that, that's, excuse me, whenever you see parentheses like that, that's basically what that means, just like added information to give you details. I'll start that over. I moved to Nashville, Tennessee from New Jersey, and I was really mad about that. So I wrote a poem called Stars of Sorrow, See You Tomorrow, she, la she says laughing. That poem and every other she wrote were intended for an audience. I would write poems down, but my poems were written to be performed in front of my family, Young says. So it had been very, excuse me, actually very difficult learning how to write poems for the page. In middle school, an experience with bullying led her to perform poetry outside home and school. That's why I started doing competitions to find friends because I didn't have any, she says. Hyun and Yang didn't start performing poetry until they were in high school. Yang attended an Urban Word NYC Poetry Slam as a junior, ready to chicken out, but ultimately performing. The energy in the room was so infectious and supportive. You no, know, infectious means like uh, it caught on a lot. It spread out a lot. So that could be referring to like uh, maybe a sickness or something or just something else like the energy or like laughing or something. You know, that uh, saying, you know, uh, yawns can be an infectious. So if one person yawns and you see it, that might make you yawn. Infectious means like, it can be easily spread. I'll start that sentence over. The energy in the room was so infectious and supportive. I felt that anything was possible, she says. The urban word community helped Yang consider herself a poet. She encourages kids not to wait until high school to think of themselves that way. And she says, don't worry about the rules. If you follow, what your heart tells you, really there are no rules in poetry. And that is the end of the article. Again, this was titled National Youth Poet Laureate Finalist Found Confidence and Friendship Through Words. It's quite a long title <laughs> uh, and it is by Christina Barron, okay? Uh, Stop sharing that. Well, yeah, that is uh -oh, the article for today's read and respond. Let me go back to the calendar real quick. Not the calendar, the course on Canvas. All right. Share my screen again. So again. Bellwork for today, April 8th. You can click this link here to get to that uh, article in case you need to go back and read something to like to get the title since it's so long, as well as the author's name. But use the information from that text to answer these six questions. And remember to write down the title of the article as well as the author.
You don't necessarily have to write your name and today's date down. That's fine. Uh, but if you write the, the title and the author down and then answer these six questions, that is what you'll do for today's bell work, okay? For April 8th, 2021. Anybody have any questions with understanding that bell work for today? Did y'all enjoy the article? Thought it was okay or not? Okay. Good. So, so. All right. Okay. Well, that is basically what we're doing for today's class. Remember, if you haven't done your cycle test from yesterday, you still can go do it. That's still open until like, I think Sunday evening at midnight. So be sure to go work on that. Uh, do anybody have any questions for me about anything? Uh, do anybody have any trouble understanding any of the questions or anything we read? No? All right. Well, in that case, if y'all do, feel free to reach out to me at the school. You know, uh, inbox me on Canvas or call up here. I'll try to answer. And I'll see y'all tomorrow, okay? All right, y'all take it easy. It's good seeing y'all this morning.